Hey guys, I hope you guys are doing great. <clears throat> I hope you guys are doing good. So today I just thought that let me just talk about how to excel in mathematics and physical sciences, right? So since I've mentioned that um, they've currently, they've recently canceled media transfer in the University of Pretoria to make it into medicine, I did mention that now it's gonna be a bit harder, right, to make it into medicine, that you have to try to at least make it straight out of high school into medicine or you have to finish a degree then after finishing a degree apply for medicine right so i'm i'm gonna try and help uh anyway how anyway possible that i can help so that you can at least excel in grade 12 and increase your chances of making it straight out of high school and that is the best way man with early preparation um with a lot of hard work it is very very possible so my history with regards to mathematics and physical sciences so i'm going to be talking about how to excel within mathematics and physical sciences and this will be applicable for learners from roughly grade 10 to grade 12 right but my history is that i didn't really do that great in high school right but i went ahead and upgraded um in this great college called EGMAP college and then it's from there that i started to excel within mathematics and physical sciences and it's that it was in that college that i started winning awards um, not only did I stop there, from there on I then founded a company called Scholarly Excellence which I've been running for the past five years now and I've later partnered with uh, Dr. Happy Amanda, recently diagnosed Dr. Happy Amanda um, and it's from, it's from what happened from that college and five years worth of tutoring mathematics and physical sciences that I'm going to be sharing some of the things that I've seen um, as a recurring and that can help you really excel in mathematics and physical sciences um so let's jump into it so the first thing right we have to really really talk about is is the is the speed work it's the groundwork right um setting a proper time to it's very important you know a person um a person who maybe sets a time 30 minutes per day versus a person who spends one hour per day right it's going to be very hard for a person who spends 30 minutes a day to compete with someone who spends one hour a day in terms of studying. So setting the proper um, work schedule very early on is really important. Um, it is important to give a disclaimer that things I'm going to be teaching here are things that you must try while you still have time, right? They're going to take time, they're going to take energy, but while, while, when you have them down, they're really going to help you uh, very much. So set a timetable, get disciplined, you know, get the motivation you need, and now let's get down to the work so the number one thing when it comes to mathematics and physical sciences that really helped me and really helped a lot of my students that i've taught is that we have to work on approach that is actually the the number one thing that helped me a lot right approach 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 the thing i like about mathematics and physical sciences is, is that it's very patterned right um the moment you you can find an approach that's going to cover the pattern very well um you're going to help yourself achieve but i'm going to come back to the approach right now uh very soon the second thing that i realized about mathematics and physical sciences is that 70 to 80 percent of the work is basically knowing your basics well right one of the things that i realized a lot when i when it comes to teaching and tutoring uh the students are really eager to tackle down the hard questions and things like that and then when we do our tests you find that they're missing marks on these smaller basic concepts so i'd say that start first by focusing on the 70 to 80 percent uh basic concepts because one when you understand that well it will be then be easier to move into more difficult uh concepts so the thing i want to first talk about now is the approach that i spoke about approach 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 you know, I don't know if you felt this as of if experienced this as a student yet, but have you ever felt the experience whereby you just wrote your exam paper, you finish writing, you go home, and as soon as you are home, you realize that I didn't answer this question properly. I didn't answer that question properly. What leads to such things is that we don't have the proper approach, number one, and we don't practice it. So what do I mean by approach? The first thing that I learned to really, really know was know the order of topics that they're going to give me in my exam so depending on this is the first quarter the second quarter the third quarter the final quarter the first thing that was important for me is to know the order 
right? Because knowing exactly which topic comes onto which question helped me prepare better. But not only that, the second thing that it really helped me with was setting up my paper as a whole, right? So when I know that in question six, uh, in question seven, there's this, in question eight, there's that, in question there's this, there's that, there's that, I, I am placed, I'm placing myself in a position of, I am moving most of the things from the space of the unknown to the known. So for example, um, let's move to this question. So this is the last thing I was tutoring. Um, yeah, I'm just going to give a, a, a quick example of what I'm talking about here. So the first thing I want you to realize is that I know that question six is chemical equilibrium within the chemistry paper, right? So this is one question. I just forget what the years were because I cut years, but these are different years. So this is a question from one exam and this is another question six from a different exam so if you notice in this one it's also question six and the other one is also question six i know the the structure of how the exam is structured right and at this point i've already structured the exam in the way that i'd like it to be structured the next thing is don't read the questions first right this is so important right uh because we are eager to now do this, we're going to try and read um, the question first and we try to to see what we know. No, no, no. So after you've created an approach of which topic to start with, you have to have an approach within each topic. Right. So the first thing I already know that question six, chemical equilibrium. After that, I have an approach within the structure. So as soon as I get to chemical equilibrium, I think to myself, OK, they're going to ask definitions. What are the definitions? that are going to be asked in chemical equilibrium and then DLFR and uh, then I know it's graphs then I know it's RISEC and KC tables right so I know that whatever I'm going to be asked has to be within one of these so when I read my question now I'm not just reading I'm reading to superimpose a question into one of these four right so for example if we jump into this question uh, they'll say that Okay, so you mean carbon reacts with sulfur according to the following patterns. Okay, yeah. the system which is chemical equilibrium at temperature T in a sealed 2 dm cubed container. The Kc value is 9.4 temperature. So stately Chatelier's principle. So I know that the first thing, especially in physical sciences, they're now on to ask for is definitions. Right? It's definitions. Right. If they don't want definitions, they'll want TLFR, you know. If they don't want TLFR, they'll want the, the, the different types of graphs that they have. And I'm not going to go into deep into the components, but this is how I approach questions. So for each and every question, I have a small approach. And then the way in which I study, I study according to the approach that I have. Right. So I'll say the point of actions for now. Um, but say, yeah, go to the past five years exam paper and right and try to learn the structure try to learn the structure and formalize the structure and then create your own structure that's going to work for you according to your strongest topics from your weakest topics the second thing is study and learn with the structure right so if you realize what i did with uh for example chemical equilibrium as soon as i have the structure my study section is like this so I'm going to first start with all the definitions that they want to ask me uh, within um, chemical equilibrium. Then from there on, I'm going to go into TLFR, do TLFR properly. And then from there on, I'm going to learn the graphs. And from there on, I'm going to do RISEC and KC tables. So the the, the moment you learn and, st and study in that structure, it's going to make things a bit easier. Also puts you now more on um, automatic mode, right? So within each structure, create a structure, a structure within a structure. This is why I'm saying that this takes time, right? Um, this this takes time, and if and if you should you should be interested, I can go deep and dissect the structure as it is and how I've created mine to be with regards to um, any topic that you might be interested in. But for now, I'm just giving you the overview and what you can do and try to do at your own. 
And then the last thing is practice. Practicing is practicing how to approach the structure, not just how to approach a question. So for example, let's say I'm about to practice. Now I'm, an, I'm about to write a mathematics exam. So I take out a past paper exam. I already have my structure. I've already structured my own mathematics exam paper. I'm gonna time myself. Then I'm gonna start with my strongest subject. I'm gonna start with my weakest subject. I'm gonna practice the structure without having to relook at my notes, see how good I do at that structure, and then come back and make amends, you know, for that structure. So the thing you must know that the structure or the approach will not always work, right? That's why you have to practice an approach that's going to work properly for you. Uh, it took me time, it took me a long time to actually come up with uh, approaches that would work easily for me but once the approach clicked it was it was all uphill from there everything was just becoming easier so this is one of the first things i'd like to teach in terms of excelling with mathematics and physical sciences if there are any more tips maybe you could like uh, i would share these so there are some other tips and methods that i'd say you'd use closer to writing the exams and i think i'm going to share that towards may within the month of may but for now i'd say practice this and then as soon as maybe we get closer to the exams i'm gonna i'm gonna share now uh strategies to use when you're closer to writing but those strategies will only work uh, if you started with these right those ones although they are good at the latter end but they need some work uh behind them so i hope you're gonna find this video very informative thank you for watching